Hello book people, P.T. Hilton here. If you're like me, you're maybe a little bit saddened that uh, the TV show Mad Men is over. Maybe you missed the, you missed the depictions of the, the later part of the 20th century. You missed the, the uh, interesting characters. You missed the interaction. You missed all that, all that stuff, the writing, um, the visuals. If you are like me in that regard, allow me to introduce you to DC's The New Frontier by Darwin Cook. I have in my hand here the New Frontier. This is the deluxe edition. I'm going to talk about the story first, and then I'm going to talk about the book itself. I just finished reading this last week, and I'm going to tell you that it is one of my probably top 10 favorite comics I've read of all time. Uh, now, part of that might be because I already have a really strong existing love of these characters, so take that with a grain of salt, I guess, but uh, I want to talk about what makes this so cool, what makes this so such a great, important book to me. Uh, New Frontier is the story basically follows the development of these characters in the DC universe uh, from right after World War II um, through like the very end of the 50s, beginning of the 60s. Um, so it's, let's say 1945 through 1961 or something. Uh, not exact there, but somewhere in that range. Um, and basically it's what is often called in the comic book world the uh, Silver Age of Comics, the very beginning of the Silver Age of Comics. If you know very much about the DC Universe, you might know there was an old Flash and an old Green Lantern, a lot of the old characters, the Golden Age characters, so to speak, and uh, in, around the, the 50s, 60s is when uh, the characters that we think of as Flash and Green Lantern and stuff like that were first introduced. So this is the story of that. And uh, it tells the tale in a very interesting way. Um, basically, in the DC Universe, what's going on at this time is there are just a few heroes who are uh, allowed to operate by the government. And basically, the, the big two around that are Superman and Wonder Woman. They are like government heroes, you know, they're on TV all the time, um, doing kind of the government's bidding and all that stuff. And then there's one big hero who is working um, undercover that the, the authorities can't seem to get their uh, hands around, and that is Batman. Um, this story is really not super much about the three of them. It's more about the other heroes coming up. You've got a lot of focus on Green Lantern, The Flash, Martian Manhunter, um, as they come together and as kind of the DC universe begins to build. So here's what I think is really cool about this book. Uh, a few different things. I'll let me try to do. I'll do three things. The first thing is the way that it depicts life in this time period. It's kind of similar to Mad Men, as I said, where Mad Men a lot is about what is the public face you present to the world, and then what is um, the way that you are when you're in private, and which one of those is the real you. You know that that is kind of a very big theme of Mad Men. Um, this is kind of similar on a more uh, national kind of scale, scale I'd say. Uh, you know, there's a lot of depictions of um, the official, like, uh, government newsreels and stuff of, here's Superman, he's so great, he's saving everyone. And then there's the kind of behind-the-scenes stuff of uh, the government going after these these other heroes um, who aren't, uh, haven't been officially sanctioned. Um, so so you have that you have the um the glorious stuff about you know um, we're the great great nation that's going to defeat communism and all this stuff and then you have a lot of uh, depictions of um racial inequality um sexism stuff like that so again it's that dichotomy of uh the public you know official stance of um, the government and the media and stuff like that versus what is really happening during these times. The second really interesting thing is the way that these, the government kind of is hunting these people, uh, these heroes, is kind of similar to a couple of things that happened in the real world. Of course, there was like the communism Red Scare, um, where many people in the entertainment industry and throughout the throughout other industries too were uh, you know blacklisted as possible communists or communist sympathizers. And uh, there, there was a lot of like um, paranoia around who's a communist and, and who's a spy and that kind of stuff. So there was that. But then in the actual comic book world itself, there was um, a bit of a scandal where um, around the beginning of this time, some of the most popular comics were not superhero comics. They were war comics. They were horror comics. A book came out um, by Frederick Wortham called Seduction of the Innocent that uh, caused quite a bit of a stir and was all about how, you know, the depictions of gore and violence and things like that in comic books is corrupting the young people today. It was a big deal. It went before Senate and, and all this stuff. So basically for fear of being shut down, the comic book industry agreed to kind of self-police and, and invented this thing called the Comics Code, which uh, uh, meant that uh, all comics that were published by the companies that agreed to this had to follow certain standards. And some of them were kind of a little bit bizarre. Um, 
there's no government authority or police officer or um, judge or any official can be presented in a negative light in any way. There's weird stuff around like concealed weapons, like you can't have a gun be concealed and, and a lot of just very strict strange things also like vampires werewolves and zombies could not be depicted at all in comics uh, so i think that this book in some ways could be a little bit of a commentary on that while these uh, character comic book characters are being hunted by the government it's during the same period that uh, in real life um, the comic book industry was being sort of uh, sort of uh, policed by the government um, the third thing that I love about this book, and this is going back to what I talked about at the beginning, but the character depictions are so great in this. Um, like, even some of the characters that aren't in it a ton, like Wonder Woman and Batman, I just feel like Darwin Cook gets so well. Um, like, there's, there's a scene of wonder woman where she goes i believe it's during the korean war she goes uh superman's trying to find her he knows that she was um dispatched to like to, to this village where there was um an oppressive group that was kind of keeping down the people and he goes in the bar and uh and it's just wonder woman and all the like women in the town are like uh celebrating and getting drunk and uh and it turns out that Wonder Woman has like basically turned all the women in the village into warriors and, and had them um, overthrow the, these oppressive uh, oppressive male soldiers who were keeping the town down. There's so many great little scenes like that that is like just so perfect for the characters. And the artwork is just so beautiful too. Um, here's the scene I was talking about there. Darwin Cook has just such a great style, kind of a, I guess you'd call it classic, almost kind of cartoony kind of style. His, I just love his artwork, and his writing is wonderful, too. So let's talk about the book itself. It's got this beautiful cover. Um, if I take off the slipcase here, not the slipcase, the dust jacket, I get uh, this also beautiful thing. Um, this deluxe edition is pretty awesome. Um, if you were going to pick up the book, this is a great way to do it. One downside is it does have glued binding, so you get a little bit of gutter loss there. Um, and that's not, it's still pretty easy to read and everything. But what is awesome about this is there's so much um, bonus material. Like there's this whole like 75 page um, section of annotations at the end where Darwin Cook goes through and like shows you panel by panel, not every panel, but goes through and shows you like um, this particular cigarette ad from the time period that was in magazines was the inspiration for this panel. Or, uh, you know, this panel was based on this classic comic that I read when I was a kid uh, whatever it's it's the it's probably the best bonus material I've ever seen in a uh, collected comic so on top of that you have oh like here's a good example like he shows you like this frontier airlines um, ad and shows you like the the panels it inspired and um, it's so cool so cool uh, beyond that we have like a lot of character designs and and just kind of the more standard stuff you would see in in a collected edition of comics. Um, if you are a big fan of the DC Universe also, I will say it's pretty crazy. Like almost every like minor character in this book is someone in the important in the DC Universe. So that is New Frontier. Um, if you're at all interested in superhero comics, in DC comics, I highly re recommend checking it out. Like I said, I'm, I'm biased because I love these characters already. But even if you're not, I think, if, if you're interested in that kind of like Mad Men kind of feel, if you're interested in like classic superhero kind of stuff, um, and one of the things that this really captures about the DC universe that I love is the way that in DC, like terrible stuff happens, but some of the characters um, are able to remain undarkened by the dark things they have seen. Let's put it that way. Uh, they are, you know, able to to retain their positive spirit and everything. And uh, I think of someone like uh, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, he's just the, he's, a, he's a man without fear. He's just bold. He's, uh, these horrible things you've seen have not been able to corrupt his attitude. Um, this is a great book, great introduction to the DC Universe. And if you're already a fan of the DC Universe and these characters, you need this book. That'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and letting me geek out about New Frontier. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.